that's exactly what's happening with semiconductors. This is a problem that I actually identified back in 2019 when I did a report as, as a, then the ranking member of Homeland Security, where we looked at shortages of drugs in America, that in this great country of ours, we had shortages. And a, a big reason for that was that 85% of all of the precursor chemicals that go into nearly every drug that we use in our country comes from China. Uh, we are dependent on the Chinese for a critical component to drugs that we need uh, for uh, for uh, medical purposes. And in that report, I actually concluded, this is back in 2019, I concluded when there is a pandemic in this country, we're going to face a very precarious problem because of these supply chains. And certainly we saw that in the pandemic, shortages of masks and swabs and all sorts of medical equipment. And unfortunately, it's not just uh, medical equipment. Now we are facing a shortage with semiconductors critical components because we're overly dependent on foreign manufacturers, whether that's South Korea or Taiwan or China. There is no question in my mind we have to bring that production back to the United States of America. American workers must be making these semiconductors. We can no longer be re uh, dependent on foreign countries for things that are absolutely essential to our homeland security as well as our economic security. And that's what this bill does. This bill makes uh, investments and leverages substantial private investments. Companies like Hemlock Semiconductor, and certainly it's a, it's a privilege uh, uh, to be at Hemlock today, and I want to thank the folks at Hemlock for hosting uh, this event. And I want you to know just how proud we are in Michigan that you are located in Michigan and making these products that are essential to the manufacturing stream. And when you think about semiconductors uh, there and just about everything that we use from smartphones, electronics, uh, to our washing machines, and certainly to our automobiles. Hundreds of, of chips are in every automobile that's produced. Uh, and when there's a shortage, as uh, Congressman Kildee mentioned, we've got cars in parking lots that can't be delivered because we need to have uh, those chips. We need to produce these items in the United States. And when you think about where the future of the auto industry is going, as we move to elect uh, electric vehicles, those vehicles will require even more chips. And then when we move to self-driving autonomous vehicles, which represents the future of mobility in our country, they require even more chips. This is a problem that only gets more challenging, only gets more difficult in the years ahead. And that's why we came together to pass this CHIPS bill to understand that these investments need to be made today so that we can provide that steady supply of semiconductors and all of the products that we manufacture. This is a big win for Michigan. Let's, let's be very clear. Michigan is a manufacturing state. We know how to make things. And when we make things, we need to have semiconductor chips. That's why Debbie and I worked so hard to make sure we had the legacy provision to provide additional resources, not just for the high-end chips, but the chips that are used uh, in everyday products. We're proud to have this uh, bill ready now for the president's signature. Uh, he'll be signing it uh, shortly. And there's no question this will create more jobs for people in the United States. It's going to hold down price increases on manufactured goods. And bottom line, this is about homeland security, national security, and economic security. So this uh, is certainly a, a very big moment, one that I'm uh, very happy to say uh, this uh, bill is now on its way to the president. And with that, I want to turn it over to my partner uh, in the Senate. Uh, and certainly, uh, we locked arms on this legislation and uh, uh, celebrated uh, when it passed uh, the Senate, and we'll celebrate once again when President Biden signs in, uh, it into law. Senator Stabenow. Well, thank you, Senator Peters. And uh, I joined Gary in saying we wish we were there in person with all of you. I know, Governor, you're excited, and Congressman Kildee, and our friends at Hemlock, and everyone who's there today. So it's wonderful, though, to take part in this event virtually. And I have to say, as President Biden would say, this is a big freaking deal for Michigan. We're seeing a renaissance, first of all, in manufacturing here in Michigan and in America. It's important to recognize uh, 613,000 manufacturing jobs have been created so far since President Biden took office. So I first want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. President. In Michigan, of course, we are seen as the leaders in making things with good paying union jobs, which is really what it's all about. But we know that we can't make those things 
in today's world without having semiconductors, which is why we're all here together. You know, I remember the first call I received from one of our automakers who talked about how they couldn't get the chips they needed. And it, it, everyone uh, was very frantic about what we were gonna do. And Senator Peters and I immediately got to work at that point. We passed the original bill uh, over a year ago in the Senate and it kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until we got to this moment where we can get it to the president's desk. And we made sure the bill included the kinds of chips that we need in manufacturing. You know, um, that may sound obvious. It may sound like a no brainer, but originally that was not clear <laughs> at all. And so we made sure that that happened. And, uh, you know, I'm thrilled to say that the kinds of chips that we make are very much a part of this bill. I'm also thrilled that I was able to get our semiconductor production tax credit into the final bill. And I wanna give a big shout out to my friend, uh, Congressman Dan Kildee, who has been a champion in really leading our whole House delegation uh, to support and move forward uh, in the House and get us to this point. So thank you, Dan. So again, this legislation is a huge deal, particularly for us in Michigan. It's gonna lower costs for Americans, it's gonna strengthen our national security and it's gonna bring jobs home. It's gonna bring high quality jobs home. And it's gonna ensure that we're leading the next generation of scientific discoveries. So this is an exciting moment. And this is a big deal for Michigan. And I'm so glad to be a part of this announcement today. So now I want to introduce from Henlock, somebody who is certainly uh, in the leadership as it relates to where we are going in Michigan, and that's Kristen Otterman. And thank you, Kristen, and all of our friends at Hemlock for being a part of this manufacturing renaissance. Over to you. Thank you, Senator Stabenow, for the wonderful introduction. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hemlock Semiconductor. HSC has been making hyperpeer polysilicon since 1961, and we are part of the Corning family. I'm Kristen Opperman, Culture and Communications Manager here at HSC. For more than 11 years, I started as a summer intern. Little did I know, after graduating with my chemical engineering degree from Michigan State University, how dynamic my career path would be. Oh, I heard the go green, go white. <laughs> Making the shift from engineering to communications has stretched my abilities and truly opened my world to new opportunities, such as working with neighboring communities, first responder teams, and doing work that impacts each and every one of our employees across the site. When you arrived on site today, I hope you had a moment to take in the view. Our team here at HSC makes one of the purest man-made substances on the earth. Polysilicon is the semiconductor in semiconductor chips. Without polysilicon made to the level of purity that we do here, the breakthroughs in technology that keep our world connected and energized truly would not be possible. The infrastructure here is extraordinary and the work being done to run the assets is second to none. I just have to say that our operations, shops, and support teams are second to none, and I couldn't be more proud to work side by side with them each day. In fact, everything you see here today behind me would not have been possible without them. I want to thank Governor Whitmer, Senator Stabenow and Peters, Congressman Kildee, and you, Mr. President, for bringing light to our industry and for bringing semiconductor manufacturing back to the US so we can have more Americans doing great work to change the world. Governor Whitmer has been a strong supporter of semiconductor research, development, and manufacturing. On behalf of HSC, we are grateful for Governor Whitmer's leadership around getting the CHIPS and Science Act across the finish line. It is now my pleasure to introduce Governor Whitmer.
Thank you, Kristen. Appreciate that and yeah, appreciate hosting us here at Hemlock where they're doing some incredible work. But also appreciative of so many partners that are here as we tell the powerful story of what we can do. And that's what this CHIPS Act is all about. Today, obviously, we're at Hemlock Semiconductor, one of Michigan's most innovative companies to celebrate the CHIPS and Science Act. I'm grateful to our congressional delegation for fighting to get this bill over the finish line and onto the president's desk. For months, I've been advocating with a number of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle across the country to make sure uh, that we would get this day, make sure that this day happened. Because we know that it's important for us to make things in America. I knew the impact that this would have on Michigan and I am incredibly proud to see it passed. In a few minutes, I'll be signing an executive directive to ensure that Michigan is ready for the influx of resources from the CHIPS and Science Act. This bipartisan legislation is a win for workers, it is a win for manufacturers, and it is a win for consumers. We're making a once in a century investment in American industry, and we'll be bringing the supply chain from, from China to Michigan and to the rest of our nation. It will create and protect tens of thousands of good paying jobs and it'll help lower costs on everything from cars to dishwashers to medical devices and graphics cards. Now the Chips and Science Act will have a significant impact on the state of Michigan. Everyone already knows that Michiganders make the best cars and trucks on the planet, our legendary auto industry. Our legendary auto industry and generations of union families put Michigan on the map. But we also know the devastating impact that the chip shortage has been having on the auto industry, reducing production and idled plants, which have impacted over 575,000 auto-related auto jobs here in the United States. Last year, North American automakers lost an estimated 2.2 million vehicles, equaling over 3,000 days. But there are signs of hope, and that's what this is all about. Since I took office, we have announced 25,000 auto jobs and are, to quote Bloomberg, in the midst of a manufacturing boom. This year, we've announced a $7 billion investment from General Motors, creating and retaining 5,000 jobs, building electric vehicles and batteries, a $1.7 billion investment from LG Energy Solutions, creating 1,200 jobs, building electric vehicle batteries and battery components, a $2 billion investment from Ford, increasing manufacturing capacity at several Southeast Michigan plants, and just yesterday, an $83 million investment from Stellantis into their Dundee engine complex here in Michigan. On top of these auto investments, Hemlock Semiconductor, a leading provider of high-purity polysilicon for the electronic and solar power industries, added 400 jobs. KLA, a semiconductor uh, company, opened their headquarters in Ann Arbor, building on their Michigan presence and creating over 600 good paying jobs. Bakker, a chemical and polysilicon firm, opened their cutting edge innovation center in Washtenaw County, creating 3,000 jobs. And Pfizer, a Michigan stalwart, announced their expansion of their Kalamazoo plant to manufacture a COVID treatment, creating 250 jobs. So the first half of 2022 proves that Michigan is on the move. And with this Chips and Science Act, we can surge American manufacturing capacity and make up for lost time. Now, I know that families are feeling the pain right now. Inflation, supply chain challenges are continuing to impact prices, increasing on everything from a pound of beef to a new PC. Once President Biden signs the CHIPS Act, the benefits will be felt far and wide and quickly. When we hear CHIPS, we tend to think about cars. And while the benefit to the mighty auto industry is clear, Chips have a widespread impact. They're the beating heart of countless devices and machines that we use every single day. This bill will mean humming factories and lower costs on electronics, medical devices, farm equipment, and cars for working families. The Chips and Science Act over five, or I'm sorry, over $50 billion for domestic manufacturing, R&D, and workforce development pro uh, programs that represent a huge opportunity for workers. The semiconductor workforce is projected to need 90,000 more workers by 2025. That's tens of thousands of good paying, high-skilled jobs that are in demand and will be for decades. 
We got started last year with a semiconductor wafer maker, SK Siltron, announced a Bay City facility, creating 150 jobs and bringing the supply chain home. Calumet Ener yes, that's great. And all the way in the Keweenaw, Calumet Electronics, one of a few manufacturing uh, manufacturers producing organic components for microelectronics, announced an 80-job expansion. In the Keweenaw, that's a big deal. Michigan is leading in semiconductor R&D, thanks to companies like KLA, the Lori uh, Nano Fabrication Facility at the University of Michigan, bringing industry and students together to evolve how we make microchips. And we also launched the Semiconductor Apprenticeship Network Program to meet industry demand and talent in this critical field. So Michigan's putting the world on notice. With the executive directive that I will sign shortly, we will compete for every project, every program, and every resource. We will continue helping Michiganders get on tuition-free paths to good-paying jobs with great benefits, the kind that you can support a family on. We will play, and we will play to win, because that is what we do in Michigan. Our spirit of competitiveness and resilience is helping us move Michigan forward. So today, unemployment is low, and small business growth is at a 24-year high. Our busiest construction season ever is underway as we fix the damn roads. And with the bipartisan budget I signed two weeks ago, my fourth, we have paid down nearly $14 billion in debt and not raised taxes by a dime since I took office. And best of all, we are home to the hardest working people, the most innovative companies in the world. And there are at least six to eight weeks of decent weather left. That was a joke. Every day is a beautiful day in Michigan. But I want to thank our congressional delegation for their work on this legislation. Our labor friends are standing up for American workers and President Biden for his leadership. Now, let's get it done and keep our country and the state of Michigan moving forward. It is my distinct honor to introduce President Biden, who is joining us virtually. Governor, thank you very much for the introduction. And there's no one I'd rather be working with the state level than you. Um, you know, uh, when I decided to run for president this last time, I decided that uh, I was tired of the notion of a trickle-down economy. Uh, my dad used to have an expression, he said, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, everything's going to be okay. And uh, so that's when I decided I was going to run and build this economy from the bottom up and the middle out. Because when the middle class does well, everybody does well. The wealthy do very well, everyone does well. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that's uh, one of the things that excites me so much about uh, dealing with the CHIPS Act. And look, um, you know, uh, uh, Gov, uh, um, we've been partners for a while in all these efforts, and there's no reason why that should slow up now. And I also want to thank uh, A.B. Ghosh, uh, and everyone at Hemlock uh, uh, for uh, you know for being so so cooperative and keeping things alive for since the '60s. I also want to thank Representative Kildee. Uh, I tell you what, as a man who cares a great deal about this issue, along with Senator Peters and Stabenow, the other members of the Michigan delegation wouldn't happen without them. Every single Democrat, two Republicans, voted to get the Chips and Science Act to my desk. It really matters. I was looking forward to visiting all of you in person, but I'm glad I could still meet you virtually. As we meet to celebrate this bill, I'm, uh, I'm reminded of what we did more than a decade ago when we rescued the American auto industry in the wake of the Great Recession. There were those who said we shouldn't. We just let it go bankrupt. Remember that debate? It was a literal debate. Let's just let it go bankrupt. But we all in this room refused to let that happen. And it wasn't just because of an iconic industry, it was because the auto industry is the heart and soul of the nation. It was about the auto industry's legacy, it's about the future, it's about America's future. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited about the Chips and Science Bill is that it sees that future for decades to come. Last week after the bill passed, I saw a headline on the front page of the Detroit, the Detroit Free Press. It says, semiconductor vote thrills automakers. I know it sure in hell thrilled me. 
and it thrilled everybody around this 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 White House and all of us. You know, I, I, the way I see this bill in Michigan is it's about chips and it's about cars. The bill is supercharged our efforts to make semiconductors here in America. And you know, these tiny little computer chips, the size of a of, of a fingertip, that are building the uh, the building blocks for a modern economy, they power everything from smartphones to dishwashers, to automobiles, and so much more. In fact, the vehicle that the UAW makes in Michigan are used as many as, the vehicles use as many as 3,000 semiconductors per vehicle. And as elect and electric vehicle sales continue to climb, there were double this year than there were, than there were last year. Automakers are gonna need even more of these semiconductors. America invented the semiconductor. But over the years, we let manufacturing of these semiconductors go or get overseas. And as we saw during the pandemic, when the factories overseas that make these chips shut down, the global economy comes with a screeching halt, driving up costs for families and in a big way. You now, a third of the core inflation last year in America was due to the high price of automobiles, which was driven by the shortage of semiconductors. The sake of our economy and jobs and cost and our national security, we have to make these semiconductors in America once again. And folks, for the folks at home, there's a broader supply chain that makes these semiconductors that connect to, to countless other small business and manufacturers. This bill funds the entire semiconductor supply chain from research and development to key inputs in polysilicon and manufactured in Hemlock. Look, I'm told that one third of all the chips in the world use the polysilicon made right here in your factory. Imagine if we add more of these kinds of factories doing some of the most sophisticated manufacturing in the world, employing thousands of workers, including UA plumbers and pipe fitters, IBW electricians, sheet metal workers, iron workers. This is the, this is a, uh, you know, as analysts say, an investment in the Chips and Science Act going to create more than a million construction jobs over the next five years. That's not even counting the job of making the chips, just building the facilities, building the semiconductor factories. There are a million construction jobs, and who knows what that's going to generate. This bill makes sure that as many of those jobs pay Davis-Bacon prevailing wage, which will ensure that tens of thousands of new construction jobs are good-paying union jobs here in America. And the bill is not handing out a blank check to companies. This bill has guardrails that are going to protect taxpayers' dollars and the interest of the American workers, small businesses, and the communities there. It means companies partnering with community colleges and technical schools that offer training and apprenticeship programs and working with small and minority-owned businesses. In my administration is going to, we're going to take, make, make sure we take back investments if companies don't live up to their end of the bargain. We're not going to allow companies to use these funds to, for stock buybacks and, and issue dividends. And finally, too often entrepreneurs and startups, you know, invent their technologies in America, only to go overseas to commercialize them, the, the, the items they invented. This bill makes it clear the world's leading innovation will happen in America. We will both invent in America and make it in America. We're going to make sure we include all of America, including rural and urban communities, right here in the industrial Midwest. Just as a lot of experts were wrong to think that we wouldn't rescue the auto industry more than a decade ago, a lot of experts today believe we wouldn't bring manufacturing jobs back to America and that they were forever gone. But they were wrong. We recovered all the manufacturing jobs we lost through the pandemic. 613,000 of them gained since I took office, more than any other president. Construction and new manufacturing facilities are up more than double this year. And the investments in the, in the, infl the uh, Inflation Reduction Act currently in the Senate are going to create even more manufacturing jobs. Jobs building out wind farms and solar panels, make, making electric vehicles here in Michigan while lowering energy costs and healthcare costs, like the cost of prescription drugs. Folks, we have more work to do, but the progress we're making is proof that we're the United States of America. There's nothing beyond our capacity when we work together. And that's what we're doing because of the 
elected officials on that factory floor were working together. And I think the one thing the American people began to lose faith in was our ability to work together to get things done. There's nothing, and I mean this sincerely, there's nothing beyond the capacity of the United States to get done, nothing, when we decide to do it together. And that's what happened this time around. So I'm gonna turn this back to Governor Whitmer and thank her again for all her incredible leadership. But I also wanna say one more time, what my dad said, the job's a lot more than about a paycheck. It's about your dignity, it's about respect, it's about being able to have a little bit of breathing room. That's what all these jobs are gonna do. They're gonna put America in a position to be the leader in the world economically for a long time to come. This is part of it. As I said before I began, in our, we had a little chat before we came on the air. I said, you know, we used to invest over 2% of our, our total GDP in re pure research and development. I got down to 0.7%. Other nations picked up that research, but that's not who we are. We're back in the game. There's not a thing we can't do. Remember, we invented these chips. We modernized these chips. We made them work, and there's a lot more we can get done. So please, please, please have faith in our country. Have faith in what we can do. As I said, there's nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing, nothing. Thank you, Governor. I'm going to turn it back to you now. Well, I want to thank the president. I want to thank you all for being here. With that, I'm going to go sign the executive directive that will empower Michigan to utilize the chips and science uh, act as effectively as possible so that we can compete for every project, every program, and every resource. And I want to invite Congressman Kildee and our, our leaders from industry and labor to join me as I, as I sign the executive directive. And thank you all for tuning in and being a part of this.